My name is Zoya Skolas. I'm an artist. I do believe you're born an artist, and I do believe that most people are born artists, not necessarily visual artists. But uh, I grew up in a household where that was acceptable because my father was a painter, so that's been an identity for a long, long time. I couldn't assign an age to it. Uh, I've mostly been a painter, but I do do some sculpture. It's uh, I just learned a term for it, although I'd read the term before. He Heather Marks, I'm going to drop a name, Heather Marks pointed out to me that I should just say that I'm an interdisciplinary artist. And that means that I work in different media and I uh, do different kinds of artwork, different styles of artwork. What inspires my work? Oh my gosh. Oof, that's another difficult question. I mean, what doesn't inspire <laughs> my work? Even, uh, you know, emotions, my emotional life, my inner life, but also the visual stimulus of being in the world. Uh, nature, for sure. I mean, you can't eliminate it from the picture, although people try, which is interesting, too. Uh, yeah, just the ever-changing world. And my inner world, that's enough. I mean, that's enough for more than one lifetime. Yeah, I have more ideas than I could ever, ever do. I don't get stuck and I don't have block. I have the other problem where I'm trying to catch up with myself or finish or actually do a whole series instead of moving on to the next thing and then maybe getting back to that other thing. And yeah. There are many artists that have influenced my work and again, some of those are probably you know unconscious influences from just seeing their pictures over time. I think television and movies also influence the work. So more than I could name, but obviously the, you know, big standout uh, abstract painters of the 20th and 21st century. And I want to put a shout out to Joan Sabo, who's deceased, but was an early influence on my work. Absolutely gorgeous uh, abstract painter who did a um, little Bay Area figurative school kind of work. And was a close friend of my father's and of my family. My father's work, no doubt. Yeah, my father's painting. Hmm, why abstract? Well, you know, I. it's an interesting question because somebody actually invented this, right? Uh, a lot of people think that uh, Kandinsky invented abstraction. And uh, it's interesting to think about in those terms because obviously I came after that, so abstraction's been around my whole life. So I can't imagine a world without abstract art. So uh, for me, I think it speaks more to the unseen than obviously than um, representational art would. Although representational art can, through symbolism, for instance, and also just through the mysterious process of painting something and even if it looks exactly like what you're looking at, there's something else there. There's the filter, the interpreter, the artist. Uh, lately, I'm doing these paintings on wood panel. They're a lightweight wood, and then I put a coat of gesso, and then I work with watercolor, and I'm trying to use large brushes and make these petal and leaf and insect shapes and go more and more abstract. So some of the first ones were just, these two were done uh, with little insects in them. And then I decided to go ahead and expand on that. And what I'm really trying to do is show how these things are all, this shape is a representative shape for life and for delicacy at the same time. And uh, so playing with that, getting more and more abstract, and noticing that that shape is present in many, many places in nature. So, for instance, this is more about stones, at least this part of this painting. And then up here are the petals. Here we have lots of layers, and I did that with the gesso on top of different layers. And I just have a, a really nice time using the brush. Um, I use two different brushes, a mop brush. Actually, they're over there. I can show you later. A mop brush and... Uh, flat to get these gorgeous shapes. One of the things that happens when I paint because I don't plan everything ahead of time is, you know, things appear 
and I see that the painting hung this way, which is not the way it's framed to be hung. It's framed to be hung this way. But I, I noticed that these two shapes look a little bit like birds, and I love that. And that's what comes up over and over again. If there is a unifying thing in my artwork across you know, all the different media, it's this bird, leaf, fish, shape, eye shape. That shape, it's just over and over again, and it's beautiful and uh, mysterious. And yeah, this looks like this could be a bird, and this could be a bird. Art isn't meant to be understood. It's uh, meant to be experienced, and like life, and it's a mystery.